G'day guys, welcome to the comprehensive walk around of the Stealth 16. I'm doing it without a fly net and hopefully I can make it through without swallowing too many flies. <laughs> Gonna start up the back of the van. As you saw from that footage earlier on, this van gets you properly off-road. And a lot of people ask the question, are these hybrids really truly off-road? I think that footage has basically solved that for you. Did get bogged, basically probably a bit my fault because I shouldn't have pulled over to let a car get past but they are properly off-road. You can't get to this epic place that we're at today at La Big Lagoon in Francois Perrin National Park if you haven't got a proper off-road van. So on that note, proper off-road van, two big spares on this particular one. And we've also got a tow tongue here where you could put a bike rack holder or something like that. Only rated to 30 kilos, so I wouldn't be putting e-bikes or anything like that up there, but your standard run of the mill bikes for yourself and the kids, pretty good idea. We've also under here, just a couple of things I want to point out. There's two recovery points at the back of this van as well, attached to the chassis as well. So properly rated recovery points. We've also got the input for go running straight to the DC-DC charger in this van, which is plugging my portable solar panel in to bump up the 600 watts of solar on the roof. Let's keep going to the side of the van here. Now, We've talked about this a couple of times, pretty much standard these days in a Java van is the Truma AquaGo hot water system. I'll give you another user case. After we dug the car out for about an hour yesterday, I was covered in this beautiful red sand. And to be able to just turn the hot water system on and have a shower without having to wait 45 minutes for the water to heat up was absolutely awesome. So. I'm really coming around on these AquaGos. This one as well, must be the plumbing set up, but literally the hot water's there within about a second, so you're not wasting any of your water off grid, running that cold through, waiting for the hot to come in. Standard outdoor shower. We've also got the gray water tank and the first or the rear filling for the 120 liter fresh water tank. We've also got a tunnel boot here, which looks quite small. You may have seen this on our Instagram walk around. Fits our Ziggy and it runs all the way underneath the giant king size bed in this van. But for to be able to fit that Ziggy, I think is absolutely awesome. Got a whole heap of other stuff, spare toilet cassette and all of those sorts of things in there. Doesn't look very big, runs pretty much the full length of the van and fits a whole heap of stuff. A lot more than I initially thought. Got our provisions here basically for most of our um, on grid water fill. Got our uh, 240 volt lead in, and here's a freshwater tank for the front. And just again with the layout of these 2024 vans, the water tanks are directly either side of the tyres or the axle, meaning that weight distribution in terms of this van where you've got a heavy fridge at the front, got a bit of weight sitting at the back, water tanks are sitting in almost a perfect spot just to make sure that your weight distribution is really, really strong. And I've really enjoyed towing this van. I, I raved about the Sirocco. I'm gonna rave about this Stealth as well. It really just sits behind the car, 95 to 100 Ks an hour. Haven't had any porpoising, haven't had any movement whatsoever, even on the long stretches where it's been quite windy and those sorts of things. So you gotta, you gotta think about your towing dynamics and when you feel comfortable, it makes your travels a whole lot easier. I'm gonna keep moving along here. That's just our toilet cassette. No one gets excited about those. What a beautiful generator slide here. And we are carrying a generator for this leg of the trip, basically because we're off grid an awful lot. And just in the off chance that we get really, really bad weather for an extended period of time, we've decided to run it. What I love about this generator slide though, is there is a um, uh, another set of drawers that come off here that we've removed. Got all my hoses. Got my hot plate for um, to go on the gas cooktop, Mavo's tackle box, and we've also got a little bit of a smart use of space here. Now I made a joke about this a little while ago because it looks like where you, um, uh, what do you call it? Your kitchen, your cutlery drawer. But it's really, really cool. You can fill this with tools, spares, and those sorts of things that you're gonna need for your van and know that they're always there. So I've got all my stuff in the car, but this is a really, really cool setup. So I'll push this back in. Smart little innovation there. Moving up, let's have a look at this tunnel boot. Again, doesn't look huge. 
runs a full length and it's accessible from the other side as well and just smart innovation a little light that runs in there you're not going to see the light much because it's fully daytime but what i also like about the thought and the tweaks that have gone into the vans is you've got these lights out here as well directly over your tunnel boot or your generator slide exactly where you need them not in the middle of your van where it doesn't really make that much sense move along to these beautiful big toolboxes Mavo so we've talked about these and pretty standard on the 2024 range as well but slight differences in this one we've got a dual jerry can holder in the front of this one as you can see this is big enough to actually store 40 litres of fuel or water I've also got my um my mains power lead I've got a spare bucket got a few other bits and pieces sitting in that boot sorry guys the flies are getting up my nose um so heaps and heaps of space we're going to quickly jump into here this is just our gas bottle holder or gas bottles holder but there's also more space i've got a couple of legs and that sort of thing for other pieces plenty of room in there to store everything that you need and this last toolbox before i go to the draw bar got our Ebus Spatula diesel heater tank there, 10 litres of diesel that you can carry on board. Going to be 37 degrees today, so we're not going to really need it. But again, same configuration without the jerry can holders, but also with the, uh, the diesel um, tank in there. Heaps and heaps of space. So let's have a look at this drawbar. 16 foot van and a nice long drawbar on here as well. Again, playing into those towing dynamics and to be... To be honest, my reversing's either gone next level or maybe I've been pretty impressed with the way I've been able to land this van. Having a bit more length in that drawbar just allows you to have a little bit more tolerance in terms of when you're positioning your van. Now, I don't talk about this a lot because it's kind of standard kit that's been on jails for a long time, but DO35 hitch. If you are new to caravanning, I reckon this is about the easiest hitch that you're going to have to be able to line up and get this safely on your car. We've been traveling with a few people recently with the McHitch and just watching them muck around, trying to line everything up and get it all done. I just find these DO35s, one, are super safe, but two, really, really easy to get onto the car. Arc 750 Extreme Off-Road Jockey Wheel. Another little bit and piece that you're not going to see when you go to a caravan show because it's just not something that you're going to have on your list of specs or must-haves and those sorts of things. But when you have them, they're really, really cool. Beautifully positioned drawbar tap. Really, really easy just to access that when you need to clean up really quickly. Or maybe you're in a caravan park, you're on mains water or something like that. Hook the hose up and give your car a bit of a spray over if they allow you to do that. Just really good ideas. Here's the other side of that tunnel boot again a heap of space as you can see we've not even not even half not even a quarter filled that um there's plenty more space for many other things in there if you need it now into the business end a little bit different to what we've seen in the past but let's have a look we've got our big fridge slide here our normal jawa really well thought out pantries You've got space for, I don't know, everything. Oh, here's a spare stubby cooler. <laughs> I broke a stubby cooler last uh, last week or so, so that's handy. We've got fruit, we've got lights, we've got oven mitts, we've got barbecue gear, we've got a cheese grater, we've got a toaster. We've got two different types of toasters because that's what you need when you travel. We've got our crab boiler and our eco pot and those sorts of things in there. I love these pantries. Again, people don't talk about pull out pantries on their fridge slide when they're when they're looking at different vans but makes your life easy as usual 96 litre evercool series 2 down under fridge fridge freezer freezer fridge fridge freezer it does everything and you can actually shut shut zones down um yeah made up in the sunshine coast evercool gear is just really good push that away oh those flies now i love this another big pull out pantry here and as you can see we've got an induction burner we've got our big induction pan in its original packing so if you wanted to make a bit more space in there you get rid of it but we don't want to ruin it as we're doing all this off-road work we've got a big pot we've got our milk frother we've got some general bits and pieces here this stuff i showed on uh, instagram the other day this is just a uh, lock lube a graphite dry powder perfect for keeping your locks 
um, operating and functional and not sticky when you're doing all the dust sort of stuff that we're doing as well. So uh, I love this innovation of this drawer. A little bit different, a little bit different to what we're used to. Thumbs up to the team at Jawa. All right, still 16. You can see the doors at the front here. So you're gonna step in in a second with maybe and have a good look around, but I'm gonna take you through this functional outdoor living area. So first of all, we've got our 15 amp out here. As you can see, I've plugged in, I'm running our Starlink and that sort of thing off the inverter at the moment. We've got this standard tray table, which you have in all of your jar models, but what's really cool about this tray table as well, I only found this the other day, little Easter egg. This is a little light in there. You probably can't see it because it's the middle of the day, but that little light's super cool just to illuminate here. It's not gonna draw in too many flies. Well positioned lights up here. And I'll just show you this. It's got the orange amber toggle on it. So you can toggle from bright white to amber to a combination of both. And then you just turn it off, soft touch. Got a control in the control panel in the front, super easy to access and actually draw way less bugs when you're running the amber lights than when you're running uh, everything else. Now, you'll notice kitchen layout is kind of more the traditional or original hybrid camper style kitchen. Let me show you what I mean by that. So we've got the full kitchen that runs out off the drawbar. Where a lot of vans these days are going to the big galley kitchen and then you've got the separate sink and then you've got the separate cooktop that all pull out. Now, it's great to have options. It's kind of horses for courses, guys. I find that this traditional setup where you've got your big four burner hob, you've got your drawers here for all of your gear, cutlery, etc. Got another drawer here with just all of our washing up gear and safety tapes and those sorts of things. We've got a little hatch here, which you could probably put a bit of stuff in there, but it also helps you access your services that are underneath there. Got a dish rack on this one. I love the fact that we've got a dish rack. That was one of the things that we missed in the last van that we had. You've got a nice big wide sink here as well that you can get your washing up done and all that sort of thing. No one gets excited about washing up, but here we are. Hopefully there's not too many flies annoying you going across the screen. They're pretty thick here. It's the only thing that I would say negative about um, Big Lagoon campsite because the rest of it is just stunning. I'll wax some drone footage that I got this morning in this video as well. Now, let's keep moving on. Another huge pull-out pantry door. And in here we've got our bowl, sorry, not our bowls, we've got our cups, so we've got our plates, we've got our cutting boards, we've got coffee, we've got hand sanitizer, we've got all of our foil and uh, Ziploc bags. Got a few sneaky chips that I was eating last night. Coffee, all of our sort of dry goods, flour, cereal, rice, spaghetti, like heaps of space in this pullout. And again, oops, I'll push it in. At night, when all the critters are around, like the little kangaroo, little joey that we had in our campsite last night, push it up, lock it away, and no one's gonna see that. Now let's have a look at the pantry in this Stealth 16. Not quite as sexy as some of those other models that I was talking about with the big galley pantry. However, functional and practical as well. All of our dry goods, all of our uh, meal bases, all of our, our little noodle soup packets, uh, our cups, our uh, bowls, our Tupperware, sauces and gravies, all of our canned goods and that sort of thing. There's probably enough room in here for food for two to three weeks, I would say, at a bare minimum combined with what you're carrying in your fridge and this little one here as well. Again, not quite as sexy, but super practical as well. Now I've kind of been building up to this. The reason that I say horses for courses and a different layout, but it's good to have options, is what I sort of find this set up to do is this is right at your back of your van. Your fridge is right at the front of your van. And hence, without sinks and things coming off the middle of the van or the belly of the van, this outdoor living area actually gives you a lot more space. Now, what I mean by a lot more space is if you had a family, and I actually think the Stealth 16 is a great family van, and you're probably thinking right now, there's no bunks in there. Why are you saying that, Ant? I think it's a great family van um, for people whose kids are grown up. Kids who are maybe 10 and above who are gonna chuck a swag out here, and in most campsites you're gonna have room for a couple of swags around anyway, where 
you just feel like you've got a bit of extra space and we'll sort of talk about that when we get inside the van as well. But again, different configuration out here, not quite as modern, not quite as sexy, however, really, really practical for certain types of user cases. There is enough room here for a family of four or five, well and truly, under the five metre long awning. Um, again, on these awnings, lots of talk about these awnings. We're running the anti-flap kit, I run my navigator straps off uh, the fascia of the awning here as well. What I love about these navigator straps is they're so sturdy, almost like a seat belt. You kind of get these locked in. You make sure you've got your ground pegs or your feet locked in as well so these can't bounce. And we've had this up in 50k an hour wind gusts and we haven't had a problem. Now obviously if the awning was facing the direction of the wind, that's not going to be as good. We've got the van perfectly positioned here as well, but with standing 50k an hour wind gusts, not right now, but earlier on or late last night, it just sits there like earth. Probably didn't choose a great color shirt to shoot this video, but anyway, let's get into it. I'm down on the ground here at the wheel. A couple of things I want to talk about. 2024 models, full off-road brake magnets, which are just going to give you peace of mind in terms of protection to those hubs and braking when you really, really need it. Also in the 24 models, we've got Koyo Japanese bearings being installed and packed at the factory. And then as we get underneath the van, as standard on pretty much all the Jawas these days, is our Lovells coils and springs. So I'll quickly just give you a snapshot of the beautiful layout underneath this van. So again, when it comes to your family, which is probably the most important thing in your world, I know it is for me, knowing that you've got quality Japanese bearings, good quality brake magnets, Jawa doing laser wheel alignments before these vans leave the factory, weight distribution setup that I've already talked about, all of this combined with the effort that you put into your tow vehicle, make for safe towing, your family getting there to the destination safe and sound, and a lot less stress because I don't know about you guys, getting places safely is something that's gonna cause some stress. So please make sure you're considering all of these standard inclusions as well when you're weighing up a price point of a van that you're looking at. This stuff costs money, don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna spend money to keep my family safe every day of the week, so. Before we go on the inside, there's one thing I almost forgot, but it's one of the most beautiful features of this van. Again, you're not gonna think about this when you go to a caravan show. These huge blacked out windows, particularly around that big, huge king size bed in there, this is the van with the best airflow I've ever had. I'm a hot sleeper, and even when it's quite cool, I wake up in the middle of the night feeling quite warm, have never had the airflow that we've got in this particular van. So over the kitchen, we've got this first big window, but let's go and have a look at the back of the van. Given this is a solid with no bump out, this is an absolute monster, this particular one. And then you jump around to the other side here, which is my side of the bed, exactly the same. So, one, beautifully tinted, which also looks really good on a stealth, I reckon, but just allowing for that airflow, which is unsurpassed. It's a big, airy van, and you can't get these things without the design and the layout of this particular van. So let's go inside. Alrighty, I've managed to get a couple of flies in the van. However, welcome to the Stealth 16. This is a beautiful van. One of the features that Ant spoke about is the massive king size bed in here. There is ample space for the both of you. We have our king size mattress topper on this and it fits perfectly, so no issues whatsoever. Check out the view. Oh. <laughs> oh. You're messing up my bed now. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk storage. So if you're wanting a little bit more of that extra security, the Stealth 16 has great little compartments down here. I store our laptop in here and our wine. 
not that I think anyone's going to steal your wine, but when you're traveling and you're off grid and you're off road, it's a safe little place to pop it away so it doesn't break. There's another little one up there that would be great for your keys or your jewelry um, to put those away at night time, out of sight, out of mind. We've also got a really generous sized seat here. And under the seat, I just store our shoes. Three 30 packs of cans and half a dozen wine bottles could fit in there as well, just by ants measurement technique. Just quietly. <laughs> um, okay, so when we're talking storage for your clothes, this is a very generous cupboard space for that. There's no hanging space, but it has shelves, so I find that really handy. Really deep, hey? Yeah, very deep. Two baskets fit in those. And then down the bottom, I've just got our underwear and then our pyjamas in that one. These ones aren't cupboards, they're like pumps underneath, but you, you can store a little bit of stuff under there that you don't need very often. And then we'll spin around over to the other side. So let's talk storage at the front of the van. So here we've got a very generous size uh, cupboard underneath the sink. We just store little knick-knacky things in here like our laundry gear, our shower bags for when we go to the uh, shower at a caravan park, jet boil, couple of cups, and as you can see, ample space for plenty more. Uh, below that is our, or are our tech drawers. So we've got two big drawers, mm. easily accessible. And then above that, this great bench space where we make our jet boils or, you know, um, cook up, use the um, induction, induction burner. burner. We, yeah. we use it on here. Um, this is also where your sink is and oh. your mirror. So brushing your teeth, uh, indoor washing up, washing your hands, all those bits and pieces. These cupboards are great. So uh, I, we store towels in here. So they're lightweight for the ball weight of the van. So towels, and um, the toilet chemicals as well. Heaps of space left in there too. Yeah, ample space. Cute little light in there, which I love. Mm. You can easily see what you're after. Now let's move on to the ensuite. Cute little ensuite. Toilet shower combined. It's got a great shower head. No complaints from me. It's even got a little nook, which I absolutely love because we had that in our um, Infinity 13 and love that for storing all your bits and pieces without getting wet. Yeah. And as you can see, there's a shitload of stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> it may not sound like much again, but it's super practical, that little area. You can even chuck your toilet paper in there so it doesn't get wet when you're having a shower. And that's what we do. Exactly. <laughs> okay. What else did you want to see, Ant? Well, I need to talk about this 12 volt system and some of the other inclusions. Okay. All right. So 12 volt system in the 2024 models, I think is standard across the range, but again, I kind of take it for granted now but this 12 volt system is absolutely outstanding. So I'm gonna put some photos into this video as I talk through it, because it is under the bed and Mavo's about to take photos of the van and I don't want her to get cross at me. So <laughs> first of all, 3000 watt inverter, and I'll show you why the 3000 watt inverter is really cool in a second. Secondly, we've got 400 amp hours of Enerdrive BTEC lithium battery. So two by two hundreds sitting in a beautifully enclosed and vented case underneath the bed here, which runs to the outside of the van, meets all of the lithium battery regulations and those sorts of things. We've also got a 100 amp, not a 40 amp, 100 amp Enerdrive AC charger for when you're plugged in on the mains. Makes a battery go like this pretty quickly. Then you've also got your um, 40, uh, 40 amp DC-DC and your 40 amp MPPT. What does that mean? So that DC-DC is going to charge when we're plugged into the car. It's also, at the moment now that we're stationary and set up, running my soft panel in. And then the MPPT is independently connected to the 600 watts of solar on this roof. So effectively when you're traveling, you've almost got like two battery sources or two top-ups or power sources feeding your battery. 400 amps, when it's getting a little bit low, um, needs to be bumped up really, really quickly. 
So I love the layout of what they've got happening. Now this 3000 watt inverter, some people might think, well that's a bit of overkill. 400 amp hours of battery if you're not getting off grid and doing stuff like we're doing all of the time, or not running Starlink and a whole heap of other stuff like that. People might say, well why do I need all of that? I'll show you why, watch this. Here's our little air conditioning remote. Just checked that the inverter's on. Yep, I'll show you the inverter controls in a second. Watch this. Here goes that air conditioner. Now I'm going to turn it off. We don't need it on today, but let me talk you through that really, really quickly. You're not going to be able to sustain this air conditioner indefinitely, particularly at night time. But what it does mean, and what I've tested so far, is on those really hot days where you just need some respite, at the end of the day, you can whack this on for two, three, I've had it running for four hours, and have confidence that you're gonna have plenty of battery power to get you through the night, to run your fridge, to run your lights, and all of those things that you're gonna to need to run at night. So it's not going to sustain your air conditioner 24 seven, but what it will do is give you a really good solid run of it at night time. Now, Again, back to that question, why do I need 400 amp hours? Why do I need a 3000 watt inverter? Absolutely classic use case, particularly if you're using the van a lot like we do. Let's quickly have a look at the control panels over here. So normally I'll be hanging out the door here, but there's so many flies out there, I don't want to let them in. Furion head unit. Here's your inverter control panel, really easily and accessible. So I know I said that it's harder to get under the bed there, and it is when you're mucking around with the battery, but Control panel's here and your EPRO is here as well. EPRO, pretty standard. You can see how many amps are coming in at the moment. We're running our Starlink and those sorts of things. We're still feeding the battery up. It's early in the morning. We're already at 95%. Got our, one of our speakers here as well. Now I'm just gonna jump out of Mavo's way here. Here is the control panel for the van as well. So you've got your two water tank gauges here, front and rear. You've got your gray water tank. You've also got another amp meter. I would be using the E-Pro over this amp meter, but it's there as an indicator. And you've got all of your resettable fuses, a little bit like the other vans that we've had, lots of individual fuses, which is great because when you've got several things wired to a single fuse and it trips, you lose a lot of other things. So just a reset. When we land up uh, at campsite, we just press our buttons for everything that we want to run and they're away and ready to go. A little bit more storage down here, as you can see, we've just put our toilet paper in there. You gotta put your toilet paper somewhere. So the power plant on these vans are just, as standard, absolutely stunning, and I would say market leading in the imported hybrid uh, market. Now, couple of other things about electrics that I just wanna point out as well. One of the things that you don't see when you go to a caravan show is the appointment of 12 volt sockets and also your electrical sockets as well. Now the 3000 watt inverter is AC transfer as well, meaning that these are gonna work when you're plugged into your mains, but also work for your inverter. But they're situated around the van really, really well. So you can see we've got a bit of a charging station here right off that bench that we're using. We've got another one at the rear of the van here, another one at the rear on the other side, and we've got another one right here as well as your 12 volt sockets and charging points there, as well as some more 240s. And look, down here, we've got even more. We've got another speaker there. That's our indoor, I guess, vent for our diesel heater. And there's a control unit for our Eva spatula diesel heater there. Quickly, it's gonna show you, that's where the roof lifting button is for the electric actuators. And then you've also got your Truma AquaGo uh, inside unit ready to go with that as well. So just really, really appointed for people who use vans. It just makes your life so much easier when you're not searching in and out of cupboards and those sorts of things to find the controls that you need in that moment when you're in a hurry to get something done. Uh, I've really got to say the standard inclusions in these 2024 models are just absolutely stunning. Just to recap them, DRS system, the Eberspatcher diesel heater, quickly about Eberspatcher, 
It's a German made brand and it's also got a great support network for service agents and that sort of thing around Australia. One of the main reasons that Jar have gone for Ebus Spatcher. We've got electric roof actuators. I forgot to show them on the outside because I'm just so used to them now. And uh, the Furion head unit and all of the bits and pieces that when you consider the price point, maybe it's a little bit higher than some of the competitors on the market but you're not going to get the quality brands that are backed up by Australia-wide service networks and work perfectly, by the way, in all of the vans that we've had. So really quickly, just to wrap up, guys, a couple of little disclaimers. First of all, when we talk about brands and that sort of thing, these are the brands as in these vans that we've received to test out. Every now and then, due to supply chain issues and those sorts of things, Joe may need to make a substitution for a particular brand and that sort of thing. But there's one thing with Joe that you can rest assured that it is going to be a quality brand name and something that has a really good quality warranty and those sorts of things. Now, in wrapping up everybody on the Stealth 16, I mentioned a couple of user cases before. For me, it's a great couples van who are looking for space. We've got that additional space out underneath the awning that I talked about earlier yeah. for big um, bed and those sorts of things. But I also mentioned that family, that family user case where you've got older kids and that sort of thing. I can just imagine kids running in and out of this van. We've got all of this space here. We've got the big bed. You could probably have a small child in there with you as well if you co-sleep with your kids. You've got the big power plant, you've got a diesel heater. you basically got everything that you could hub, not just for a couple, but for a big family as well. You know, two, three kids in, uh, providing their sleeping outside in swag. So, this van is a very different one to what we've tested out in the past. There are no bunks for young kids but I still think it's a really good family van, so it's just a consideration. The other thing I would say is there's less internal stuff than maybe what we had in our previous vans that we've tested, meaning that there's no stand-up fridge and that sort of thing, but it makes room for all of this amazing space. So, choose your vans wisely, guys. You know, I, I said it before, very different to the Sirocco Grande that we took out last time. User cases are gonna suit completely different needs, so, as always, get yourself into Jawa, check out the website or get into um, the showroom or into a trade show or something like that where you can see all the um, different models next to each other. But as for the Stealth 16, pleasantly surprised and a massive thumbs up for what this van does at a particularly good price point. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.